Hello, and welcome to Scarfulu, where winter garments meet elder gods. You know, I've always loved the way games handle music. I'd argue that the way in which music is handled in games is integral. Whether you need eerie atmospheric music for horror games, or whether you need uplifting, heroic and orchestral scores for RPG games. So I thought, when is music particularly added to a certain scene in the game? And that's what this list is about, the top 10 musical moments in gaming. Before we start though, I'd like to set a few rules. Firstly, no music based games, because otherwise of course they're going to get onto the list, they're music based games. And secondly, no more than one game per franchise, because otherwise there's a certain games which would be on this list more than once, and that wouldn't really be fair now would it? Oh yeah, and there might be a few... Spoilers. So just watch out. You've been warned. Fallout 3 has some fantastic music, and its score definitely adds to the empty feeling of the game. But you know what this game wouldn't be the same without? 3Dog and Galaxy News Radio. The music on the in-game radio certainly adds to the atmosphere, but this guy right here happens to be one of the most likeable radio hosts I have ever heard. This is 3Dog! He interacts with what the player has done previously, and this makes him really interesting to listen to. And you can meet him in person, which makes him feel much more human than, say, Mr. New Vegas in Fallout New Vegas, who you never actually see at all. And if you do this, then you're on the naughty list. Forever! Limbo is an indie platformer with an interesting and immersive atmosphere, and how the game handles the music is a testament to this. And I know what you're thinking right now. Wait a minute, Scar Tutu. Limbo's got no music. You're a fraud. Whoa, 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 whoa. Lower those pitchforks and just hear me out, okay? Limbo has no music. Yes. But that's why it's on the list. It proves that a lack of music can be just as good as having a fantastic soundtrack. And to be honest, there isn't really any music that fits with a little boy being murdered by a giant spider, is there? <laughs> ah, the Binding of Isaac. This is one hell of an indie game, no pun intended, which is fun and you should buy it. Edmund McMillan didn't bribe me to say that, by the way. It's just a good game. Anyway, Danny Baranowski, the game's composer, did a brilliant job with the music. But one track sticks in my head particularly well, and that's the final boss theme, known as My Innermost Apocalypse. This music is used in the final boss, and the final final boss, and if you are really underpowered by that point, then that music really means something to you. You may not understand, but put it this way if you're familiar with Isaac. Once, I beat the chest with Eve, with base damage, and four red hearts. Many would consider this impossible, but you know what egged me on? That music. What else can I say? It's awesome. Wee, you cutesy Mario clone! What could possibly go wrong? Wait a second, this isn't happy. Ah! What is that? Why is that? How is that? Allow me to correct myself, a cutesy Mario clone with a twist, called Eversion. As you play the game, everything becomes creepier through everting, which changes the world into an alternate version, allowing you to solve puzzles. The music change is what makes it stick in my mind though, because as I descend into the depths of this game, the soundtrack just gets weirder, and weirder, and weirder, and each time, the music gets more unnerving. My favourite eversion, as you might say, between levels has to be this one. That's when you realise, oh, something's not right with this game. I'll be perfectly honest with you, I've never played Conker's Bad Fur Day for the Nintendo 64. I don't even have one to play anyway, so the only way I would get to play this game is if I wanted to be... Naughty. Anyway, I've seen bits and bobs of this game, but one musical score that sticks in my head is the Oprah-styled theme of The Great Mighty Pooh. 
I am the great mighty poo, and I'm going to throw my shit at you. Now I can already hear it. How can that be on the list if you've never played the game, Scarf Fruity? Well, it relates to the old days of Team Fortress 2. You know, when there wasn't like a bajillion hats. Quite often on the old Facebook server, someone would play this song down the mic using an external program. So, yeah, that's how I know the song. This one was a difficult choice for me due to the limitations of one per series. I was originally going to pick the skeleton song from Monkey Island 2, because it was actually the solution to a puzzle later on in the game. However, LucasArts completely killed it for me with the special edition version. Anyway, this spot goes to the final battle between Guybrush and LeChuck in Telltale's Tales of Monkey Island. That's a bit of a mouthful, actually. LeChuck is really built up to be a villain in this game, more so than the previous titles. He becomes a good guy, saves your skin a couple of times, heck, you even begin to trust him. And then he betrays you in the worst way possible. He steals Guybrush's wife, Elaine, and even murders one of Guybrush's friends, before murdering you himself. And the final battle, as you might say, between the two legendary pirates is one of the most epic and wonderful things I have ever seen. Just because of the hugely orchestral version of LeChuck's theme. And that's why it goes to number five. You know what's so great about this? Ah, we're both getting our cardio in for the day? I can't deny how much I love Oblivion's soundtrack. It's just so damn awesome. But one thing I love even more in Oblivion is the intro. First of all, Patrick Stewart performing a monologue in the coolest possible way. Awesome. And secondly, that music. And the final hours of my life. Every single time I play Oblivion, I watch that intro. And that music gets me pumped every time to play it. And make Captain Potato Face. If you've played Portal, then you know what's coming. Of course, it's still alive. This song was a huge hit when it first came out. I love this song so much and I played it over and over on my iPod, on my PC, and on my in inhaler. Now, one might argue that this is a little overplayed, and yeah, I agree. But at the time, everyone loved this song. I listen to it quite rarely now, but it fills me with a little nostalgia whenever I hear it. I was actually considering putting Want You Gone from Portal 2 in this spot, but then I realised, Still Alive makes you want to play through Portal again for probably the bazillionth time, whereas Want You Gone doesn't. It's still a great song, it's just that Still Alive shot first. Like Han Solo. Hand shot first. Don't lie to me, Lucas! Sam and Max. Sam and Max. Oh, how I love thee. And oh, how I love Jared Emerson Johnson. You make good music, my friend. Now, Sam and Max has actually one of the first musical numbers I ever saw in a video game. Specifically, in Season 1, Episode 4. Sam and Max has plenty of moments like this, but this was the first one I saw, and that is why I chose it. When I first heard the song, I pretty much just reacted like this. What has happened? But after a while, I began to really enjoy it. I mean, come on now, who doesn't love a secret agent known for his monotonous voice and expert door guarding abilities, cloning himself and performing a cabaret style song about war? Picture this, you just got a team of people. You know them, respect them, trust them, and they trust you too. You are leading a mission involving this team, which will likely result in their deaths. As you'd expect, your supposed last moments would have an awesome theme song. This is the case for Mass Effect 2's suicide mission. 
Your entire team is fighting a horde of aliens, and you have to win, whether you're prepared or not. The music in this section is simply mind-blowing, and it easily takes the number one slot on this list simply for that. Even if some of your crew die, you feel as if their deaths are not in vain. In fact, let's go further than that and say that even if you fail this mission and everybody's dead, you still feel like you tried your best against impossible odds. There's no song better to make you feel this way than the theme used in this section. And when you succeed, you feel like a damned hero. Nothing tops this. Nothing. What made this theme even better was the fact that it was a much more dramatic version of the score used throughout the game, which made it feel like you'd been on a journey, and this was its ultimatum. Anyway, Mass Effect 2 Suicide Mission theme. Number 1 Spot. And there you have it. That's my list of top 10 musical moments in gaming. Now, this is my list, so if you thought of anything better to add, please feel free to tell me in the comments, and don't kill me. I wouldn't like that all too much. You know, you know what I'm saying? Have a nice day, and take care, folks!